Gan Dollars, Snake and Jam Office and seven other corruption dramas of 2018 inches. From the dismissible to the downright jaw-dropping corruption-related incidents, this year has been no less dramatic. From snakes swallowing huge cash to vanishing generators and even monkeys, here are a few interesting corruption stories that trended in 2018. The mysterious snake that swallowed N36 million in jam office. Nigeria more or less stood still in the month of February when news broke that a snake allegedly swallowed a sum of N36 million from the Office of the Joint Admissions and Matriculations Board, JAM, in Bint date. According to the story, JAM officials had visited the Bin State office to audit their accounts and discovered the malfeasance. The office clerk, Phil Aminuchichi, who was in charge of the revenue generated by the state examination body, could not account for the sum of N36 million generated by the state board. She disclosed that the money had been swallowed by a mysterious snake from her office. Not much has been heard of the case ever since. And monkeys came for their share of the millions too. While the seemingly outrageous news of millionaire snakes was trying to simmer down, another news broke that a certain monkey had swallowed N70 million from the farm of the chairman of Northern Senators Forum, Senator Abdullah Emu. In his remarks on the incident, Senator Shasani, who spoke with newsmen after Senator Adamu was removed as NSF chairman, said, I think this country is becoming a huge joke. First of all it was the rodents that drove away the president and we now have snakes consuming about 1036 million, and you now you have monkeys. NFCVB boss, Thomas A. Dale, arrested over theft of generator. When Thomas A. Dale resumed as executive director of the National Film and Video Censors Board, NFVCB, many had high hopes for him. However, after several petitions on his high-handedness, Adeo was eventually arrested for selling a generator belonging to the Lagos office of the board. He was alleged to have broken the fence to gain access to the store where he carted away the turbine generator worth millions of naira. Other items allegedly found in his house were plasma TV sets, computers and air conditioners, which were allegedly stolen from the central store in Abuja. He has also been accused of siphoning about 10150 million belonging to the board running through cash lodgements in several accounts. Adeo also allegedly sold official cars while converting other boards' asset for his personal use. He has since been arrested while he is still being investigated at the Olagban police station, Lagos. Did an NPC divert an LNG funds to pay subsidy? President Muhammadu Buhari's administration scored another low when it was confirmed that the state-owned Nigerian National Petroleum Corps rotation, an NPC, diverted an LNG funds amounting to N378 billion to secretly fund fuel subsidy. This revelation brought to the fore how the current administration had been financing oil subsidy, which it had hitherto claimed as a scam. Aside that, the states and National Assembly were said to have never approved this payment, meaning the NNPC took a unilateral decision against the provisions of the Nigerian constitution, to use the flush funds to pay for fuel subsidy. NNPC's GMD Mike Antibaru had written to the president to approve the usage of the NLNG dividend funds to shore up the depleting strategic fuel reserves, as the NNPC could not use its own funds. This had happened at the height of fuel scarcity in the country between December 2017 and January 2018. According to Baru, 
The NNPC took immediate action on the fund when it got express order from the National Assembly to urgently end the fuel crisis. Meanwhile, the National Assembly came out to say it never approved the move, stating that the NNPC had said it would take action on the fuel scarcity but never informed it on how it intended to do it. The presidency has been mum on the issue, while the group general manager, Nduyudhamadu, has described it as a loan taken to save Nigeria from chaos. Name a DG and the N33 billion not satisfactorily accounted for. Mustafa Mayaja, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, boss, was indicted in the alleged mismanagement of N33 billion Northeast Intervention Fund. The House of Representatives had called for his immediate sack after investigation revealed that the NEMA boss alongside some other government officials had mismanaged several funds meant for internally displaced persons in the Northeast. The House of Representatives Committee on Emergency and Preparedness Response also questioned the process of authorization for the release of the M5.8 billion fund for emergency food intervention in the Northeast as well as N3.1 billion emergency food intervention in the Northeast in 2017 from the Consolidated Revenue Fund account. Vice President Yemi Osinbejo had approved it when he was acting president, but the House said the move contravened Section 84 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. The investigation revealed that the Nigerian government lost the sum of N33 billion due to my Hodge's mismanagement but the DG has come out to dispel this claim. According to him. Name never received N5.8 billion according to the report but only got N800 million, while other funds were paid to contractors. Joshua Darii and Jolly Nyame get conviction after 11 years. Former governors of Plateau and Taraba states, Joshua Darii and Jolly Nyame finally secured convictions for corruption-related cases concerning their activities as governors between 1999 and 2007. After 11 years on the case, Rev. Jolly Nyame was found guilty on 27 of 41 counts filed against him by the EFCC for criminal breach of trust by misappropriating the sum of N1.64BN. He was therefore convicted and sentenced to various terms, including a 14-year jail term, which will run concurrently. Barely two weeks later, Justice Adbukola Banjoko, who had convicted Nye Aim, also sentenced Joshua Darii to 14 years in prison for a criminal breach of trust and misappropriation of state's funds running into over N2 billion. Just like Nye Aim, his case has been in court since July. Both have since appealed the judgment. Faos's cat and mouse drama with the FCC. After enjoying years of immunity, Adel Faos, former governor of Ikiti State, finally submitted himself to the EFCC in his usual dramatic manner. With a blue shirt on which EFCC I'm here was inscribed, he showed up at the EFCC office immediately after the end of his tenure as governor. He was accompanied by Nisam Wyke, governor of River State, and Femi Fani Kaot. The EFCC had been impeded in trying him by the immunity clause Nigerian governors enjoy but now, he is set to answer the many cases that have been filed against him, particularly the N1.3 billion he allegedly received from Sambo Dasuki through Musili Uo Benekoro in the run-up to his election victory in 2014. He has also been investigated for several contract scams while in office. In the end, he was charged with 11 counts on conspiracy and money laundering. In perhaps the biggest corruption story of the year, Abdullahi Ganduj, 
governor of Kano state, was seen in multiple videos collecting and pocketing dollars suggested to be bribed from contractors. The governor has, however, denied the video's authenticity, claiming they were staged by his opponents to tarnish his image. Jafar Jafar, publisher of the Daily Nigerian, who released the video, has also been sued. Days after, one of the national dailies, New Telegraph, named Gondujit's Governor of the Year. President Muhammadu Buhari also described him as one of the best governors in the country when asked about the travails of the governor. Meanwhile, there has been much back and forth in efforts by the state assembly over possible impeachment regarding the matter. A court in Kano state has also stopped the state legislature from going through with the process. NFF's Salazu used youth bribery scandal. Salazu Yusuf, a 56-year-old assistant coach with the Nigerian Football Federation NFF, secured a one-year ban, as well as a fine of $5,000 after he was caught on camera making a bribery deal with undercover journalists who had posed as agents of football players interested in securing a place on the national team. He was said to have collected as much as $1,000 as bribe to feature the players and the team.